you know, we keep meeting like this, people are going to start to talk. I hope so. I'm John Zadar. I'm the host of On Top and Hot, and this is Wednesday, July 20th. So what do we do on this show? Well, we like to dedicate our time to looking at OTC and penny stocks. You see, I'm a day trader. I am here from bell to bell in front of this screen, and I am scouring the news. I'm looking at technicals. I'm going to the forums, reading the buzz. I'm doing scans. I get a lot of information, and I make a list of the ones that catch my attention, and then I look for as much information as I can share with you. Hence, the news. We got scrolling news over here. This covers the last couple of days. The oldest news is at the top. The newest news is at the bottom. And there's a lot of new news. Today, there was a ton of news. I couldn't post it all, there was so much. So keep your eyes open. You might see something special in there. So we are over here at the otcmarkets.com website. This is my go-to site, folks. Whenever I do research on an OTC stock, I don't go anywhere else for one main reason. It's never outdated. You see, FINRA and the SEC update this site, and I don't know of any other site, every single day for every single OTC stock. What's the point of searching for the information when you know where it's at? Make life simple. Make your research simple. Just use the otcmarkets.com website. At least start here. All right, so how did our OTC market fare today? Better than yesterday. Well, at least in one regard, the one that's most important to me, our share volume jumped. We were at 13.3 yesterday. Today we're at 14.2 billion. I do believe our high is 15.1 billion, which we did maybe a month, month and a half ago. And that was a high that we hit after eight months of falling. It had been a long time since we had hit that high. So I would like to see this get over 15 billion and then just continue growing. Dollar volume fell. We've been at 2.4 billion, which is above our average of 2.1 for the last couple of days. But as I said, every time we get up there, we always fall down to right here, 1.7 billion. Now, to be honest, I'm really not concerned about the dollar volume. I mean, obviously, the more the merrier, but I don't ever see that the dollar volume has any effect on the market. So I'm really not too focused on that. Trades, well, we're still stuck in that channel between 250 to 300,000 trades, which isn't bad. I mean, it's keeping us going, but we normally do over a half a million, but it's been a long time since we've hit that. So we're about half of our trade activity, but our share volume is growing. And as long as that keeps growing, we're going to see activity in our market. Now, speaking of activity, as I said, we had news today. There was lots of jumping and bumping on the market. We even had a few very explosive stocks, and we're going to look at one of those. So I'm going to share with you a couple that we're going to focus in on, and then I'm going to give you a few that we just don't have time to look at, but I can at least give you the ticker and the catalyst and let you do what you need to after that. All right, let's get this party going, as I like to say. Well, since it's a party, let's go big. This is NUVG, Nuvis Grow Core. This was a juggernaut today. Talk about a stock going to the moon. And I don't think anybody saw this coming. Looking at the charts, nah, not a heads up there by any means. But news came out today. It was big news. It was explosive news. It was news they really needed. They're getting a reverse merger. They're going to get revenues. So things just went boom on the market today around this stock. She finished today at roughly 30 cents and almost 1,400% gains. And would you believe that was not her high today? Not even close. She is on the pink tier. She's current. She's got a transfer agent verified, but she does not have a verified profile. Now, I'm always telling you, look for these two green ticks when you're investing in stocks. But really, that's only for long holds. If you're in a stock for a short period of time, a day trade, a short swing, really doesn't matter what condition the stock is in, what's going on with management. You're in the moment of the trade. If the stock's rising, nothing here is going to change that. But if you're going to buy this stock for a long hold, through time, God only knows what can happen, and you're going to want all the verified information you can beforehand, right? Now, the company used to be involved with an automated cultivation platform helping cannabis cultivators. They had a lot of different products, sensors, power control. They still own all the IP, the intellectual property, but they're not doing any of this business. And it looks like they haven't been doing it for a while, and they know it. So this is big news. They're excited about it, and so are the investors. So what was that relative volume today? Not bad. Let's just round this up for easy math. 
She normally does 9,000 shares a day. Today, she did 9 million shares. You're looking at a 100 times increase in 24 hours. That is booming. Share structure, let's see what our float is. Hey, we got a low float here, folks. 12.6 million, we'll call it the unlucky 13 million. And I'm sure that low float is helping it to rise so fast. Financials, what sort of money is she making? Eh, she ain't. She hasn't been making any money. That's the last quarter here in March of this year. So this is very exciting news. We don't see shell risk over here. I don't know why, but that's exactly what this is. The company has a business. They're not making any money. They're not reporting any money, but there's nothing there. So the news today is more than just exciting. It's necessary. Disclosures. Got anything over here interesting? All right, looking at their financials, I do find this interesting and I'm just noticing it now. They are current, they are pink current, but look here 2016, 2015, 14. These are their financial filings. I don't see any down here. We can open this up further, but again, the company isn't doing anything, are they? So they're probably not even filing. They probably got some status where they don't have to file. But they do have a filing here that I wanted you to take a look at. This is a 1K. This came out at the beginning of this month. Now, this is a really long document. Going all the way to the top, this is a 1K. They say that it came out in March, but I think it actually came out in June. And as you can see, there is a lot of information here. Now, I didn't take the time to read this whole thing because, God, I don't know how many pages it is. So what I did is I just looked for information that I thought would be important that we'd want to know. Things like splits or mergers. Well, that's what I found going all the way down, folks. I mean, literally the very last thing. Glad I didn't just read it from top to bottom. They tell us here that since late 2019 until today, June 2022, the company has had limited operations. Currently, the company holds all of its assets and intellectual properties. In mid-2019, the company was forced to minimize operations and suspend certain business activities while actively pursuing other avenues alongside holding their IP. So in 2020, the company began to seek potential merger candidates for the company. The pandemic has had extensive negative effects on the company and its remaining operations. We may recommence the operations or we may actively continue in pursuing mergers and acquisitions. And that's the route they took. So if we jump over here to the news, they've got lots of news here up at the top but it's all old. That's from 2017 and back. But thank God they brought in one piece of news and it came out today. Pro Music Rights Inc., one of the world's largest music licensing companies, announces the signing of an agreement to go public via a reverse merger with Nuvis Grow Core. It's not a very big news press. Pro Music Rights Inc., one of the world's largest music licensing companies, announces the signing of an agreement to go public via a reverse merger with Nuvis Growcore. Pro Music Rights, the fifth public performance rights organization ever formed in the United States, and that was in 2018. Its licensees include notable companies like TikTok, iHeartMedia, Triller, Napster, 7 Digital, Vivo, and hundreds of others. Pro Music Rights controls an estimated market share of 7.4% in the United States. We cover artists such as, and here's a big old list that they've got. Now what this company is basically doing, well, let me show you in their own words. This is over at their LinkedIn account. They tell us that Pro Music Rights is what is known as a music performing rights organization. A performing rights organization represents songwriters, composers, and music publishers. Pro Music Rights issues licenses for a monthly or annual fee, then retains that fee as revenue for Pro Music Rights, and then collects the usage fees from businesses that use that music, including television, radio station, broadcast, and cable networks, new media including the internet, streaming services, and mobile technologies, satellite audio services like XM and Cirrus, nightclubs, hotels, bars, restaurants, and other venues, even digital jukeboxes and live concerts. These usage fees are then distributed as royalties to the songwriters and composers and music publishers that Pro Music Rights represents. 
Pro Music Rights is recognized in the U.S. copyright law as a licensor of music and currently represents more than 2 million music artists. They've had a few lawsuits because they do that. If people aren't paying after playing the music, they go after them. So this company has been around. There's a lot of information out there about it so i suggest you do some more dd but it really looks interesting to me and after today's run you've got to give it a little bit more attention right so let's go take a look at that chart and see what it shows us well of course we're doing our charting on my free trading platform because it's the only one i got it's just think or swim and if you don't have one you can get it too just going over to td ameritrade sign up for their free trading account you don't actually have to trade with them don't tell anyone i told you that just keep your account open and you can use this anytime you like cost free so we are looking at ticker nuvg that is a six month four hour chart how flat is that remember no heads up this thing has got a 200 day SMA that looks like a line I just drew on the chart but that is its 200 day SMA there's been a little wiggle in the price enough to create a low bubble right here of just over a penny and you can see we've had a little bit of growth over the last few days it's about 80 percent believe it or not coming up from the bottom on top of the 50 squeezing up against that 200 and then she launched. Look at our technicals, folks. All of our technicals are pushing up, up, up. Whenever a technical is pushing up, it is good. This is my price, uh, percentage price oscillator, my ADX, the MACD, and the RSI. Everything is blazing right now. 20 day, one hour view. So there's our little itty bitty growth. That is about 80% gains right there. And the launch and our technicals on the one hour look great and this is the only day we have any volume five day five minute view all right so we had like i said an 80 percent gain it doesn't look like it but that is 80 percent gain right here and this is a 2400 percent gain that fell back to 13 hundred percent gains and if we draw our line from the bottom of where this surge started to the top and I like to find the absolute middle. You could call it the attitude line. And I want to see this stock keep at least 50% of what it threw on the table. And it did. You can see, now I just spitballed this, but I'm pretty close there. You can do it mathematically if you want it exact. Because I'll tell you something. This line right here, though there is no line, there is no real support, resistance I can draw it off of. Right now, it has just become one. The dead center of the bottom of a surge and the top of the surge that is an algorithmic expression. Why? It's the middle. It's a perfect average. That's what it is. And that's what these charts use, are perfect averages on everything. Millions of averages. So right now, it's bouncing off of it. Maybe a month from now when the price comes down, it'll bounce off it again because it will be an important factor in the charts from now on. So it did bounce off of it, did not come below it. I mean, it did 80 bit, but I mean below it, did not come below it, bounced off of it, and it is above the 50%, maybe we're at 60% of the gains it kept. It is consolidating, it's going sideways, that is a good thing. She's sitting right near the 50 day SMA, and I notice we don't have a 200 day SMA on here. So when that comes on the board, eh, the price may shoot towards that 200, whether it be up or down no telling technicals uh they all look cooled off right now all of this going sideways has cooled everything off there's no flames it doesn't even look like any burning embers right now but bloody heck i would keep my eye on this one after the launch today god only knows what's going to happen so nuvg should be on your watch list just because she's got a small float very active when she takes off and this was the first day in a very long time she's had any activity there could be two or three day runs you never know and you won't know if you don't watch her so put it on your watch list nuvg our next stock was another heavy hitter today not as big as the last one but enough to catch your attention this is ticker nnri name of the company nnrf I wonder why they didn't use that as a ticker. Must be already taken. She finished a day at 008 with 33% gains. 
Now, would it interest you to know that she had 10 times that much on the table today? She sure did. She had news come out today of an acquisition. It is great news. She really needs this acquisition. So she's on the pink tier. She's current. She's got a verified profile and transfer agent. So it all looks good over here. Now they tell us that the company is a project development and asset management company focused on environmental and nutraceutical fields. And their focus is on North America, both the US and Canada. And the news that came out today fits right into that perfectly. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Nice increase, woo! We went from 118,000 to over 14 million. We're not gonna call it under the radar by any means. Share structure, 328 million outstanding and a nice float of 61 million. Some people would call that a small float, absolutely. Financials, what kind of money are they making? Well, they got nothing on the annual and they got nothing on the quarterly. Now that's always interesting to me. The company should either be a shell company because they're not making money or a shell risk because they're not making money one way or the other. So I'm not quite sure why we're not seeing either one of them up here. But I'll tell you what, the news today is going to change all this for them. Disclosures, we got anything recent over here? Financials, uh, yep, see right there, that tells you the date that they filed for. There's your March 2022. So they're all caught up here, no problem. And SEC filings, we've got nothing woo, for 22 years. So we got nothing going on over here. So let's go check out that news. That is where it begins. We have two pieces of news and that's all we've got. Both of them are from this year and both of them are about the same thing. One came out in May, NNRF signs a letter of intent to acquire business in health and wellness sector. Two months later, they finally get around to it. NNRF Inc. enters a definitive agreement to acquire Elevate Nutraceutics LLC. So they tell us here that NNRF Inc. today announced that it has signed a definitive agreement to finalize the acquisition of Elevate Nutraceutics and is expected to close on or about August 1st, 2022. And then RF also announced that it is extending its letter of intent to September 1st, which was previously announced as acquiring NUCO, a yet to be identified corporation in the green technology segment. So it sounds like we've actually got two acquisitions going on here. One they're finalizing and one they're still working on. EVN intends to launch its Healthy Living website. The website will feature the original founder and creator of 8-Minute Abs, Jamie Brinkus, in a re-envisioned launch that will include targeted workouts for the entire body as well as healthy menu options. The company also intends to launch its own proprietary health supplement line to increase efficiency and effectiveness for healthy living and improved workouts. Well, they've got the right company for that. They tell us that the founder and CEO, Joe Pavlik, is a health and wellness innovator and an industry leader in performance nutrition field, having formulated hundreds of products and programs for many international companies, world-class athletes, and Hollywood's biggest stars. Sounds to me like they got the right man on the team. He's got a lot of experience and obviously a lot of credentials dealing with these big stars and big athletes and big companies. So. They now have one acquisition they're finalizing. Looks like a second acquisition with Nuco. We need some more information about that and they're gonna be making some money now. So you can see why the chart exploded. Oh, you haven't seen. Well, let me go show you. And an RI six month, four hour chart. We got a high back here of almost a nickel and then we have a thousand percent drop to our low bubble of double zero five. She has been under the 200 as well as all the other SMAs all this time, including the 10. She's under everything. Hit a low bubble here. She did bounce off that low bubble right up to the 50, hit her head and fell back down. And then today she launched way the heck up here and then fell all the way back to the 50. And look at that volume, folks. That volume is incredible. Technicals, cool. There's not a lot of heat here at all. You wouldn't know she had a hot day whatsoever. Going into that 20 day, one hour view. All right, so she started off the day here. We are, goodness gracious, how many days ago is it? That's many days ago. 
Many days ago, she had a roll here of 100% and fell down even lower than where she started. Today, she had a big jump, but it wasn't at the start of the day. No, it was somewhere in the middle of the day, and it happened very quickly. All that jump was in one hour. Technicals, nothing to brag about at all. Let's come down to that five day, five minute. All right, so the beginning of the day, we started here at double zero six. And we had one sale at uh, about 20 minutes after 10. The next sale did not occur until 15 minutes after noon. And 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 minutes, you had your 300 plus percent gains. That's it, 25 minutes, and then it fell abruptly right down to the 50-day SMA, which, curiously enough, has just shown up on the chart. Now, if you watch my videos, you hear me say this often. It seems curious to me that over and over and over again, I see this. When a strong SMA appears on the chart out of nowhere, the 50-day, the 200, for some oddball reason, the price seems to gravitate to it. Whether it be up or down, the price just sort of beelines to it. And what do we see here? Bzzz, exactly, right to the 50-day. Now, it did hang around here for a while, looked like it was consolidating, trying to get back over top. Then it just gave up the ghost, all the way down, under the 10, under everything. And we do have an absence of the 200-day on here right now. Technicals do not look strong at all. I don't see any strength here whatsoever. So what we have is a float of 60 million that definitely activated when the news came out. The news must have come out late. That's all I can think of. And now she's looking like she didn't even have news. She could have a second bounce. I really don't know, folks. All I know is that when volume comes in, this thing shoots. So I would put NNRI on my watch list because with the 60 million in those bars, you see this has a tendency to give away money, but you've got to catch it. And obviously, they are very quick bounces, but this news just came out today, so I expect follow-up news. And remember, we got the NUCO uh, deal that's supposed to be somewhere around September 1st. So August 1st, September 1st, we know we got news presses coming out. Between now and then, God only knows what's going to happen, but it's worthy of being on your watch list. Wouldn't you agree? Our next stock is a penny stock on the NASDAQ. Keep in mind that any stock under $5 is a penny stock, regardless of what market it's sold on. So we are now taking a look at WTRH, Waiter Holdings. She finished today at 31.5 cents with only 28% gains, but she had news today. It was impressive, important news. Now, it sounds like they're changing operations, like they're gonna be doing something different, but actually, as far as I'm concerned, they're just evolving. They were in the restaurant business, but are now taking it to your door. But not just food, everything. At least that's how they put it. So what was the relative volume around this company today? She normally does 15 and a half million shares a day, not too bad. Today she did roughly 50% more, 23 million. Our share structure, well we got 158 million outstanding. I was ahead of the game here, I went and looked. Normally the unrestricted shares is why I get my float. It is 144 million. Not as good as the first two, but it's not as bad as a billion shares. Financials, what do we got going on? Ooh, this company's making some money. Uh, at the end of last year, we gotta pull these three zeros down, put that behind here. They made $182 million, had to spend $108 million to get that, so they got to keep $73 million at the end of the year. How about quarterly? All right, last quarter, March. They did $35 million in three months. Had to spend $20 million, but got to keep $14 million in three months. That is not bad at all. Disclosures, anything new here? Well, yeah, we do. We got a couple of Form 4s. These are filings they have to put in whenever the management or insiders buy or sell shares. And they all accumulated some more shares here. So that's good news. What I am focusing in on is this 8K. You know, I like my 8Ks. This came out in June. Now this is with regard to a shareholders annual meeting. They were asked to vote on five or six different ratifications. One of them, which was a reverse split. And this reverse split could be anywhere from a one for four to a one for 15. And it was approved. 
Yeah, it was. 60 million voted it yes. 35 million voted it no. Now, it looks to me it is going to be a management discretion, which means they can do it anytime. It's not like there's a date here set up when it's going to happen. So it could happen in three months, six months, nine months. And when it happens, you're going to feel blindsided because they didn't inform you. Oh, but they did right here. They're not obligated to have to give you a news press or anything just before it happens. They have told you already. Now, speaking of news press, this is the news that came out today. Waiter Holding Zinc today revealed the logo for ASAP, A-S-A-P, the soon-to-be new name for the company as it rebrands and evolves into a broader Deliver Anything model. The new name and logo reflects a fresh and dynamic look that reinforces the company's new vision to deliver anything to consumers same day from any type of business while still paying homage to Waiter's local roots. They tell us here that they were founded in 2013 and they are based in Lafayette, Louisiana. Waiter operates an online ordering technology platform using the Deliver Anything model, including food, alcohol, convenience, groceries, flowers, auto parts, anything. And check this out. Its proprietary in-stadium delivery system now provides an enhanced fan experience at sports and entertainment venues. Additionally, Waiter Facilities also has access to third parties that provide payment processing solutions for restaurants and other merchants. And the last thing I want to share with you is an article I found that came out today about this. It's not a news press. It's an article. Waiter gets serious about broadening delivery platform. Delivery platform Waiter is moving away from its restaurant roots as it shifts to a delivery anything model, unveiling new branding to go with its new name, ASAP. Waiter on Monday said it would officially switch to the new name and identity later this summer as it emphasizes delivery across a wide range of categories including food, alcohol, convenience, flowers, auto parts, on and on. The rebranding embodies the future direction of our company in which you can get everything ASAP. Our vision is delivering anything to consumers, same day from any type of business. With ASAP, we will bring our best-in-class food delivery services to a broader range of products. I wonder if that's going to include cannabis. Maybe. Waiter was founded in 2013 and operates in about a thousand cities. Imagine that, a thousand cities. So, they have evolved, as I said. They're still doing food, but they're doing it delivery, and they're delivering everything else. Now, think about that, folks. There's a lot of delivery companies out there, and most of them deal with food. Maybe packaged food, cooked food, but it's food. How many people are delivering auto parts? Or how many people are delivering alcohol? I mean, really, if they're going to deliver anything, they could get millions and millions of people for business. So I think this is really an exciting idea. Let's go take a look at that chart and see how exciting it looks. We are looking at Waiter's chart, WTRH, six month, four hour. We've got a high bubble back here of $2 with a long fall all the way down to 13 cents. She has been under the 200 all this time, but she's hung close to it. She hasn't gotten too far away from it, and here recently, she's had a breakout. That is a breakout, folks. She shot up over the 200. We looked at it this day, absolutely did. She took off, got really high after we looked at it. It was one day later. So if you thought after we looked at it, I was wrong, you were a little impatient. She took off, folks. She got way the heck up here. We looked at it when it was down here at uh, 25 cents and it did hit a high of 44 cents. Then it has fallen all the way back down and it is now curving around. And I want you to take a look here, folks. This is my lines I put in for the surge, the bottom line, and the top line. And of course, that's my 50% attitude line in the middle to see if the stock kept 50%. Now, I only drew this for that one day, but I told you in the last stock that we looked at that these lines become important. Even though there was not a real place to draw a support or resistance off of the price bars, I found it just by finding the middle of that surge. And I said it will be important in the future. Well, look at this. She went up and came right down on top of our 50% and bounced off that and is flying back up. Our technicals look good. Our PPO is a crossover just like the MACD. You want to see that. That is hot. 
Our ADX is pointing up. Excellent. MACD has now had a crossover and is just hitting the signal line going up. And our RSI is straight, but it's in the mid 60s. Everything looks really, really good on the four hour. 20 day, one hour view. Not doing a whole heck of a lot until that jump when we looked at it. And as you can see again, boy, oh boy, this is many days after I drew the line, having no clue what was going to be out here. And look, folks, that's how important these lines are. It is respecting the line, which we just took as the center. There was no bars to get this one off of. So she has bounced off that, and she's gotten above the top line, and everything looks good right here. Technicals are excellent, folks. Excellent on the one hour. Looking at that five-day, five-minute chart. Downhill run until about two days ago. It's been very volatile. I will give you that, folks. She is all over the place. Lots of jumps. But this is a serious climb she had today. She started at roughly 25 cents and went up to 33 cents. Not a huge gain, but we did have some strong volume. She has broke out, though. That's what we want to pay attention to. She's gotten above the 200, stayed above the 200, bounced off that 50% line. Right now is above the 200 and pulling away. Now, there has been a lot of consolidation here in the aftermarket hours, which has cooled everything off. See how flat everything's gotten? So you really can't look at this as being a surge or as soon as the market opens up tomorrow. However, I like this company for a long hold. I do. She may get some good bounces because she's got to change her name, change her ticker, and get her logo out there. And all of that is going to have news presses. And all of that is going to throw it in front of the investors' faces. So there is going to be catalysts. I don't know if you call them big, but there's going to be catalysts that could easily get this thing growing. But I like what they're doing. I really do. Delivering anything to anybody, anywhere that they're at, I love it. That could be super big, and I'll bet you other companies start to copycat that. So again, I would put WTRH on your watch list because they do have catalysts coming. There are things in the future that can get this stock running. You don't want to miss it, do you? And we got a few bonuses here, stocks that I didn't cover. They have some catalyst to them. You may want to consider these stocks. The first one is Quan. Q-U-A-N, Quantum International Core. First thing I want you to notice is she does have a low float, only 24 million, but that's virtually all of the outstanding shares. She did have news come out today. Quantum International reports that the Loot Up app has finished its testing phase. The developers have not found any security vulnerabilities or any functionality issues with the app. The company is proud to announce the completion of the Loot Up app. The app has been submitted to Apple App Store for approval listing. It's already on Google. The company is collaborating with experienced marketplace builders, World Tokens, to bring a new and exciting Loot Up Marketplace to the app. This will be available as part of the app when it becomes available for download. Now this is the definition of what this is about. Going over to Google Play. They tell us that LootUp is a fast-growing rewards platform that gives users the ability to earn cash, gift cards, and cryptocurrency by watching videos, playing games, taking surveys, quizzes, and much more. Enjoy an all-in-one experience where you receive reward points and can also redeem them for shopping credit. Earn Amazon gift cards, Walmart gift cards, Starbucks gift cards, and more. Redemptions can also be made for PayPal cash or for various cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin, Litecoin, Dogecoin, Shiba Inucoin, all via BitPay. So this could be very exciting. There's a lot of people always looking for ways to make money online. Easy ways where they really don't have to work. This could be real popular. Another one I want to point out to you is HDVY, Health Discovery Core. What I'm pointing out here, I don't know if it's going to help or anything, but I'm just showing you how strange the market can be. We had a 76% gain on a company that is pink limited. That means that they're late on filing. So late that they are now in their grace period. Grace period gives them a 15-day countdown. If they don't get their filings caught up before the end of that date, they will be pulled off of the open market and put onto the expert market. Not a delisting, it's just a timeout. You're stuck there, you can't buy or sell your shares until you get your filings caught up. Then you come back on the open market. So what am I showing it to you for? Well, look here. Grace period. 
Yes, the last day of grace period is 7-20-22. Well, that's today, folks. Today is the last day, and the stock finished the day at 76% up. Why would you put your money into a stock that's going to get yanked off? And I assure you, when it gets yanked off, the price is going to fall because the brokers and the marketers take advantage of it back on that end. I don't know why. It just happens a lot. And the last stock we're taking a look at is OLB, Old Group. They had 23% gains today. There was a filing that came out from an 8K. This came out on July 12th. They have authorized to repurchase 1 million shares off of the outstanding share count. And you can see they already have a very small share count. 14 million, they're going to take another million off of that. And we got about 9 million in the float. So if you like low floats, this may be something to consider. Whew, that was a lot of work. It's also a lot of information. You had a lot of news there. Did you go through that news at the end? There was a lot of new news today. I gave you some stocks that were hot and jumping today, and then I gave you a few that you may want to consider. There's a lot of DD out there. Just trying to find a few to show you can be difficult. So help me. Go out and do your own DD. You never know what you're going to find, and the more you know, come on, say it with me, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks. Thank you.